I'm Drew Stevenson, and this is a lecture about the ALA Schechter Poultry Court versus United States decision, a US Supreme Court case from 1935. And it's one of our most famous cases about the non-delegation doctrine. For my students, this is an important case for administrative law and in a statutory interpretation and regulation case, it's also one of the ones that we study in my case book when we do the introduction to the administrative state. In my administrative law case book, this case is not a lead case. It's discussed in the notes and cited by other cases in the case book. But really, this should be in the case book. It's one of the most famous cases in this area that you should associate with the non-delegation doctrine. So let's look at what happened in the Schechter poultry case. So our main takeaway here for the students, in case you uh, sort of zone out at some point, is that this is a unanimous decision holding that the National Industrial Recovery Act, which was a, a centerpiece of President Roosevelt's New Deal, was unconstitutional. This was a huge blow to um, the president and got a lot of media attention. And here's a zinger quote from the opinion. We think that the code making authority this conferred is an unconstitutional delegation of legislative power. In other words, this is one of the rare instances where the US Supreme Court has overturned a statute based on the non-delegation doctrine. Here's the facts of the case. The National Industrial Recovery Act allowed local codes for trades to be written by private trade and industrial groups. And then the president could choose to give some codes the force of law, essentially um, uh, adopt them as the regulation that applied to that entire industry or trade. And Schechter Poultry, uh, as you might imagine, is a poultry company and there were charges brought against them um, and 18 charges for violations, including the sale of a, uh, uh, to a butcher of an unfit chicken and the sale of two uninspected chickens. And in the media, this became known as the sick chicken case that basically um, we had regulations to keep poultry companies from selling diseased or sick chickens to um, uh, retailers. And here's our holding in the case. The court held that the codes violated the constitutional separation of powers as an impermissible delegation of legislative power to the executive branch. In other words, the concern is that Congress gave the president the power to make laws and the constitution vests that power exclusively in Congress. And therefore Congress isn't allowed to just ask the president to do its job in its place. Note that the court also held that the National Industrial Recovery Act provisions were in excess of congressional power under the Commerce Clause. So you may have read this case in your constitutional law course um, as one of our Commerce Clause uh, cases. Now, what's the rationale here? And by the way, I have some photos here. It, you'll notice of the uh, media headlines covering this case from the day. The, um, the crucial statutory term here was fair competition. And the court spends a lot of time in the opinion talking about how there was no traditional common law definition of fair competition. And in contrast, the phrase unfair competition had a lot of cases defining it, but it was un those were unhelpful here. And so the phrase was unhelpful. So we can't just define the term in terms of its opposite, like what counts as unfair competition, but the statute was told the president to, uh, to adopt codes that would promote fair competition. And the, the Supreme Court is saying that there's no, he had no, there's no definition given for fair competition and that could mean whatever the president wants it to mean. And it all, the court also noted and was troubled by the fact that there were no formal administrative process um, or procedures here. And remember this case comes before the enactment of the Administrative Procedure Act. So some of these concerns went away after the APA was ad adopted um, or enacted, but here they're concerned that there's no safeguards, there's no real, we don't even know the um, procedural steps that a president would go, for, uh, go through in picking one of these private trade association codes and giving it the force of law. 
And then also they spent a lot of time talking about um, the act's policy statement, which they said was also vague and all inclusive and therefore didn't satisfy the intelligible principle uh, standard for under non, the non-delegation doctrine. I have a couple zinger quotes here for those of you who really like highlighting um, uh, certain sentences in your cases. To summarize and conclude upon this point, section three of the Recovery Act is without precedent. It supplies no standards for any trade, industry, or activity. It does not undertake to prescribe rules of conduct to be applied to particular states of fact determined by appropriate administrative procedure. In other words, this is just an open-ended um, permission to the president, go do whatever you want. And that's not a law. That's not what Congress is supposed to be doing. Here's a, another Zinger quote. Instead of prescribing rules of conduct, it authorizes the making of codes to prescribe them. For that legislative undertaking, Section 3 sets up no standards aside from the statement of the general aims of rehabilitation, correction, and expansion described in Section 1, which again are mostly largely undefined. Quote, in view of the scope of that broad declaration and of the nature of the few restrictions that are imposed, the discretion of the president in approving or prescribing codes and thus in enacting laws for the government of trade and industry throughout the whole country is virtually unfettered. So again, our concern here is giving the president unfettered discretion or to quote a recent president, absolute authority or total, total authority. That's exactly what the Supreme Court in the 1930s thought Congress could not do. Congress cannot give the president total, total authority over anything. Now, there are a few areas where the Constitution gives the president total authority or virtually um, uh, total authority or unfettered discretion, and Congress can't interfere. And we're going to have some cases about that. But here, Congress can't just give the president unfettered discretion with no um, guidelines that he has to work with it. Cardozo, who um, you know is famous for coming up with the, the ultimate zingers or these memorable statements that would become the quotable quote. And a lot of times Cardozo's concurrence would take on a life of its own and be the part of the case that everyone quotes and remembers. And that is true here. Um, you'll note that um, the newspaper headlines actually, instead of quoting the majority, are quote the Cardozo concurrence. Cardozo said that this is a creates a roving commission to inquire into evils and upon discovery correct them. In another one of Cardozo's non-delegation cases, he concurred and said, this is delegation running riot. Cardozo would really polish his phrases and get them just right. Okay, here's a review question to see if you've been paying attention to this video. In Schechter Poultry, who created the trade code that regulated the poultry companies? A, a private trade association, and then the president approved it, or B, Congress through a committee of senior congressmen? So hopefully you know the answer. This was supposed to be an easy question, and if you don't, you really should go back and review this video. Okay, that concludes our lecture about ALA Schechter Poultry.